What happens if you have mostly an Asian friend group, but all you do is partake in white culture together? What sense does that make? Or is that kind of logical? Let's discuss. Yeah, it got deep on this Reddit post. It is actually from a uh, girl who I believe is from China, came to America, learned English. Her post is, why do I attract Asian friends who worship white people? So basically she says, as I became an adult, I realized that most of my friends I make are white worshipers. I thought that they would date somebody hot since they are not dis interested in anyone Asian, but they always Always end up dating average to below average looking white guys whether they are my gay Asian friends or my straight Asian female friends she herself is a female she says that they get super excited every time they throw a Christmas or a Halloween party but if she invites them to a lunar new year party they would never show up she goes on to include more details etc etc and mm. let me tell you Andrew the comments on this got explosive all right so David do you have any takes before we get into the comment section do you have a take because I got to take on this uh yeah i mean i would say that this girl is describing something that i believe her i believe her it, it happens but i'm almost surprised that she's surprised because mm. we're living in the anglosphere yeah first of all i think you live in america so it's hard to avoid white culture or american culture which american culture is heavily influenced and mixed in and fused in with black american culture at this point so that's the greater american culture right so well, obviously there's a spectrum within america yeah because people always say when you come to america you either adapt white behaviors or you adapt black behaviors or like interests that is what is a common binary right, they're that starting is to they're melded now jack right carlos now. and uh even yeah. you know yeah but but basically Guys, you live in America. You might as well partake in some American culture. Of course, that makes sense. And you should to an extent because you live here, right? And there is a no, healthy there's amount. nothing wrong with coming to America and learning about America. Yeah, no, of but, course not. But, but, but it is true. I agree with her because she's probably from China. So she's looking at it like, yeah, you guys like, like getting together for Oscars party. But if I say this is the best movie in China or even three body problem remake on Netflix, nobody wants to come over to my house to have a watching party. Exactly. There is a rejection of Asian culture amongst Asians in America. And with as Men, as much progress that Asian content has made, there are still plenty of Asians out there that are like shying away from like, oh, that's a Chinese movie, even a Korean movie. Maybe they even have trouble watching Parasite. You know, they're just like, I don't know. I just want to watch a movie in English. So here's my thing. I think a lot of people in America, first of all, there's a lot of Asians in America that do reject Asian culture, like some of her friends. But there's also a large part that don't, don't put white people on a pedestal, but they do put white life styles on a pedestal meaning right. that like because people still view white people successful white people cool white people upper as having, middle class to rich right yeah as having the best balance in america not saying all white people are in a good position but i'm saying they have the best balanced life that that is really what a lot of asians mean when they say oh i want to get treated and live a life like any other american you're probably referring to a white American. Right, you're talking about there's a difference between whitewashed, white worshiping, just wanting to partake in some sort of like free-minded white ease of life, yeah. right? There's, a, there's different words to describe different yeah. things. Yeah, now obviously if you in 2024 still are a self-hating Asian, then clearly you got some deep-rooted stuff because it's a lot easier to get into Asian stuff than it was a decade ago. But do you think it's true that she's Chinese and she's got to be referring to a primarily Chinese friend group because Koreans may get together and watch K-dramas more often than Chinese get together to watch C-dramas. You, well, I, I, you, would, uh, you would assume that maybe they're Chinese because she's talking about Lunar New Year and like that would mostly appeal to Chinese or Vietnamese. Really, those are the two groups that, that celebrate it the hardest. So she's probably, yeah, she's probably talking about a lot of other Chinese Americans. And it's true because Chinese, ancient Chinese culture often is very hard to get into it. There's a lot of barriers to it. You got to know the language or you got to have some reference for it. It's not going to be the quick release dopamine exactly. you're looking for from a white elephant Christmas friend party yeah. or a uh, St. Patrick's Day even. I don't think Asians But I'll say Patrick's this, Day. it really depends on the city that she's in. Because if you're in the three or four cities that rep that celebrate Lunar New Year, for example, really hard, like LA, SF, New York, maybe Seattle or Vancouver or Canada, like these places have big Lunar New Year celebrations, then it's a little bit more cooler. But if you're like in Ohio and these are your Asian friends in Ohio, 
I'm not shocked at all. Yeah, not only that, let's be honest, in places like New York, there's hyper-modern brands that are trying to, like, bring Chinese culture or Asian culture into the modern day. Like, almost, uh, Andrew, we went to a few events this past Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, where it was very expensive luxury brands trying to mix it with the Year of the Dragon, right? Yeah. They, they probably, she probably doesn't have that available in the city she's in. Exactly. So what I, my quick recommendation is, I guess, to compile a lot of the cool Asian or Chinese content or whatever it is, the content that you want to show them, and you just kind of keep testing them and throwing it at them, Maybe not. It's maybe it's not a Lunar New Year party. Maybe it's a movie that you guys watch together. Maybe you guys do a at home hot pot first and play some Chinese rap or Chinese pop music. You know what I mean? Right. Like, don't just and there's not anything wrong with Jay Chow's greatest hits from like ten or fifteen years ago. Me, I want what I need. But like, there, there's new songs that came out this year in China too. <laughs> like, there's new music. It's not just Jay Chow's wow's greatest hits. From the golden days. No, guys. David, that's all the Chinese music that was ever made. It just ended at Jay Chow after his peak. That's it. There's no more pop yeah. music after him. After Kai Bu Lao Ko. Right. It ended. Um, anyway, let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, you know, it's very interesting because Irish and Chinese both arrived for the first time in America in the 1850s. But Irish now have an Irish president in Biden. Obviously, they had, they had one in JFK. And Chinese are still considered essentially perpetual foreigners in this country. Who who is to blame? Is it because the Irish had these advantages to blend in or did they have a different game plan or is because they're also Christian, even though they were Catholic instead of Protestant and the Chinese just stayed super separate from everybody? Right. Interesting to use the Irish as a use case. Usually well, uh, you, let usually... me tell you this. When you look at an Irish person, you look at a Chinese person, not only fundamentally thousands of years back is their culture completely different. Uh, that's a hard one to, because Ireland is connected to the United Kingdom. Well, no. And then yeah, Anglos yeah. are the from the lower part of the United Kingdom that dominated the world. Yeah. So they're Correct kind me of, if I'm the, wrong, Ireland is part of the UK. Just It's not part of Britain. UK yeah. is the larger kind of region. Right, right, right. So, so I'm yeah. saying that like, if, it's if, if your UK lower different. part of your larger zone like took over the world, you probably could be able to adapt with them even though there was some beef from back in the days or maybe there's still some contentiousness than somebody from literally the other side of the earth. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a great analogy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say this. To acknowledge this, I think that the people who came in the 1850s were not put in a great position to amass a ton of like influential long-term power in America. And that's why they haven't. Even in places where they landed like SF, Chinese are way weaker than their representation should be technically. Right. So, I mean, Cantonese specifically downplayed themselves in this country for the last 150 years. Anyway, somebody said, self-hate is always weird. It's honestly the lack of self-respect and the worship of whiteness. It is so off-putting for me. Let's have a little bit of pride as Asians. Yeah, and I think nowadays having pride is cooler. It doesn't mean you have to hate on white people. We're not, we don't have a channel full of just hating on white people and stuff. I think you can acknowledge that there's differences and that... You know, they're the ones who are is the general dominant culture, but you can be proud about being Asian. It is easier to be proud of being Asian. If you cannot be proud of being Asian in 2024, there is something wrong with you. Right. You there can follow is, like 600 proud Asian meme pages, right? Bro, listen, if you weren't proud of being Asian 15, 20 years ago, I can actually even understand to an extent, even though I'm unhappy to hear that. But nowadays... Oh, you're not even doing the work. You, your eyes are not even open, and that's not an Asian not eye joke. Yeah, man, and I'm not happy about this. Some, a lot of parts of the world are unstable. You know what's pretty stable? Well, at least, you know, I'm not saying maybe men, structurally Asia. You know what I mean? I think we still put a lot of pressure on ourselves from our parents and a lot of expectations, but that, that's yeah. been that way. Take pride in the stability and the productivity. How about that? Um, somebody said, I feel like my Asian female millennial friends from non-Asian majority communities tend to be way more white worshiping than my guy friends. Shocking. Oh, wow, I'm so shocked. No, that makes complete sense, honestly. I, I'll say this. When you feel like growing up and Asian millennials, probably in their earlier developmental formative years, they felt like being Asian, possibly, especially if you're Chinese, Korean could be 50-50. It depends on, you know, how exposed you were to HOT and all that stuff. It's like, I'm saying that you probably felt like you were on a sinking ship. And your natural reaction when you're on a sinking ship, even though it's your ship, is to hop on another ship. But I think that, especially if you were a girl and you were pretty, it's way easier to lateral onto another ship and have that like ship's captain and crew accept you than like the guys. Not only the guys may have some innate sense of not wanting to jump ship, but even if they try to jump ship, 
they might not even get allowed on the gallows of that shit. Yeah, you got to take the women and children first, and then the guys, they yeah, got to fend for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody said, it's really a whole millennial thing. You must be a millennial. You didn't say your age, but I'm guessing you're a millennial because it's way different for people 25 and under nowadays because things are changing. Uh, No, I still think, I do agree it's mostly a millennial thing, but... Depending on where you are in the country, man, it still like feels like you're a millennial. You know what I mean? Oh, you're saying Gen Z can be living a millennial lifestyle if they live in a throwback ge geographical cultural zone. Like yeah. there's different hot spots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, America's a big country, guys. There's a lot of variance in culture when you go blah, 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 Midwest, the East Coast, West Coast, South Coast. Um, somebody said, you need to make friends with Asian Canadians, Asian Americans from Hawaii, or at least somebody that was raised in a Western school from Asia. Yeah, I would say this. If you are from those places, you just have a different mentality because the society you were raised in, all the distributions, all the pressures and stuff were different. Somebody said, man, you don't need to fault your friends. They'd all get together and want to be white together, even though they're all Asian. They're still good people. They're just not cultural warriors. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, no, you could still be friends with them. I didn't say don't be friends with them. But if it really bothers you, <laughs> then yeah, somehow you got to find some new friends or... Get them more into being Asian. Yeah, everybody prioritizes different value systems in life, yeah. right? But and for you to convince them to be more proud of being Asian, it also helps if you're cooler and you're viewed mm -hmm. as cooler and they view you as, like, somebody who uh, is cool to she, them. She did say that she might be lower ranked in the friend group. Ah. So she doesn't have the leverage within that fishbowl to be, like, the top leader of goldfish to lead all the other fish in the fish tank. That's how social dynamics work, guys. Somebody said it has to do with Confucianism, uh, embodiment of submission to authorities and higher-ups. In the U.S., the white people or the white culture is the higher-up. So Asians, unaware of their motherboard programming, will unconsciously submit almost to a level that other, everybody else is even shocked to see. Yeah. yeah, I guess I think there's truth to this, yes. I don't think that's the full reason, but certainly not wrong. Um, ultimately, man, I think that this girl should join a church, move different cities, maybe start a cooking IG of whatever culture she values, and she's going to connect with it. If you cook a culture's food a lot, Andrew, wouldn't you agree that there's some likelihood that you would value it to some extent? Yeah, and then you'll also connect with people on social media, and then, I mean, there's just so many ways to go about it, and I think this person... Uh, probably likes their friends, probably is grateful that they have a nice friend group, grateful that they get to go to these Halloween and Christmas parties that are set up. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I've only been to a couple Halloween and Christmas parties of friends in my life. I've been to more Lunar New Year stuff, to be honest. Yes, yeah, so I have to admit that as Americanized as I am, I still have not partaken in this white party culture in America, the white house party culture in America that much. I have, but not that much. So you've been on a few boats hosted by Asians trying to be whites. Uh, host. Uh, yeah. Also, but, crypto bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was on, I went to, there was a white sorority who, uh, who I was on a grab a day with, but yeah, you know, very few, very few times. Listen guys, I think culture is changing, but you got to just understand your micro environment and your own exposure and your own fishbowl. You got to look at what's happening in other cities and what's happening around the world. Uh, Singapore, Sydney, there's, there's a ton of stuff happening, but your own fishbowl might not have a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, my overall takeaway again is if you cannot find some way, somehow, to be proud of being Asian, to find some Asian inspiration in the world right now, in this vast content world that we have right now, you are just destined to be a self-hating Asian. Or you're destined to be stuck in an environment where you feel helpless and you're like, I'm boxed in, but I also can't hop out of the box because there's no other boxes. But there's other boxes. But you got to do the work and sacrifice. You don't have the willpower to get to those boxes. So be like a frog and leap out of the box is what David's saying. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below what you think about this person's issue about having whitewashed uh, Asian friends. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.